Well, uh, good morning out there. This here is Pastor Cole with Eastern Baptist Church here in Des Moines, Iowa. And we're in the area of assurance. And the ABCs of Christian growth, letter A is assurance. And we're going to be on point number two is why do I need assurance of salvation? Uh, Satan's going to come along and, and uh, try to tell you that you didn't make a decision for Christ or if you sinned, that you really can't be a Christian. Jesus doesn't love you and all these kind of things to cast out upon what God done in your life. And oftentimes we succumb to some of those uh, doubts and stuff that we have that uh, Satan places in our mind. And uh, God uh, wants you to know that, you know, we have assurance because we have eternal life. He died for us on Calvary, died once for all, period. Sins are forgiven past, present, and future. And so why do I need assurance? In 1 John 1, 4, the Bible says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. I mean, there's reasons why we need to have assurance. And, and uh, I tell folks, you know, a lot of things about being saved, we ought to be exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And uh, you have to have the love before you can have the second one, the third one, and the fourth are like steps to build on one another. So here you have this uh, Bible verse that says, these things write unto you that your joy may be full. Assurance brings joy. I mean, even in troubling times like we have today with COVID and this stuff about the elections and, you know, it just, it's amazing the, uh, uh, the, uh, the adults in, supposed to be in our nation's capital that are still wearing pampers uh, because they can't accept an election or whatever. Uh, it's really sad. Uh, you know, you, you don't see no joy there in D.C. Uh, there's some problems there. But I'm going to tell you something. God's children, even in trying times like this, we ought to have some joy. And joy means to have great pleasure, happiness, and delight. I mean, can you smile today? <laughs> can you tell Jesus, hey, praise God, thank you, I love you, and uh, help me to serve you today to do what's right? Uh, so joy, uh, when you talk about assurance, it brings joy. We can have joy in the spiritual blessings uh, of a spiritual life. We can have joy in the blessings of a spiritual life. In Isaiah 61, 10, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the uh, garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth her with her jewels. So, I mean, you stop and think we have blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ, spiritual blessings, and that ought to bring joy to our, our heart. Amen. Uh, we, uh, we can uh, have joy in the delight of God's word. I mean, do you delight in the word of God? And when you pick up the Bible and you get to read it and God speaks to you through it, do you delight in that? Uh, we ought to. And so in uh, Jeremiah 15, 16 says, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. And also in Psalm 119, 47, and I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. So, I mean, we ought to be loving the word of God, thanking God for his word. It ought to bring joy uh, to years of my life. Uh, we can have joy in the time of spiritual refreshing. Uh, God wants you to be spiritually refreshed, Amen. In Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, it says, And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people uh, with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many uh, uh, that were possessed with them. And many uh, taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. I mean, I stop and think about it, being refreshed and stuff and God healing you. Uh, the joy that you have, the joy that I had when I got a, a call from the doctor about the cancer in my head that it was all clear uh, where they took the uh, squamous cell uh, skin cancer off the top of my head and uh, then they had to go back and do a biopsy to make sure it was all clear and it was, so praise God for that. That's a blessing, amen. And it ought to bring joy and I'd be refreshed in the fact of what God's done in your life. And in verse 39 in Acts chapter 8, it says, When they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. You know why he went rejoicing? Because he was a saved, born-again believer. Most of those funny Bibles out there, well, I know the NIV does, takes the Acts 8, 37 out, uh, which talks about when the eunuch gets saved. And then they went down in the water and got baptized. It was salvation first, baptism second. 
And of course, in, in those Bibles, uh, they get put a disclaimer at the bottom. Sometimes the verses down at the bottom, sometimes it's not there at all. And they have the numbering system in amongst the uh, text. You can't even tell when something is missing. Uh, Romans 5.11, and not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. I mean, you stop and think, uh, I praise God. You know, the Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no remission. I thank God my sins are forgiven because of what Jesus Christ did for me that I couldn't even do for myself. Uh, we can have joy in the love of Christ. Uh, think about that. This is the love of Christ. Whom having not seen, you love in 1 Peter 1, 8. And in uh, whom though now you see him not yet uh, believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I mean, uh, remember when you got saved, uh, how uh, the burden lifted, uh, that Jesus lifted off of you of sin and uh, the joy that you had that you were saved and excitement and stuff. Hey, do you still got that excitement? Do you still got that joy uh, in your life, amen? Uh, have you forgot the wonder of it all? Um, you, you ought to be rejoicing that every day about the gift that God has given you and praising God for that. How about uh, you can have joy in trials and tribulations? In 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13, says, Beloved, let it not, uh, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which ye, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, uh, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I mean, there's times we're going to suffer for Christ. Uh, do you have joy in your trials and tribulation? Acts chapter 5 Verse 41, and they departed for the presence, uh, from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. When's the last time you, you taken a stand for Christ, suffered for it, and then turned around and rejoiced in the fact that God counted you worthy, allowing you to do that for him? Uh, we ought to be uh, continually uh, thanking God about being saved. A joy uh, is, is uh, another way of talking about how your assurance brings uh, that you have assurance in your salvation and that assurance brings you joy in the things that you do for God. Uh, but also we see in, uh, not only does it talk about uh, having assurance, having joy and stuff, and that uh, you need to have assurance of salvation, and we see that in 1 John 1, 4, but also we see about assurance in our salvation in uh, 1 John 3, 19 through 21, uh, when it says this, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts in knowing all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then we have this confidence towards God. You know what assurance brings us? It brings us confidence. I'm not talking about arrogance. It's talking about confidence. Confidence means boldness, freedom to speak. We have confidence that Jesus Christ saved us once for all. And so we can uh, rejoice in the fact that it brings confidence. You ought to be a confident Christian in your walk with God. When you talk to others about Jesus Christ, you ought to be confident what the Bible says, amen? Uh, so uh, when you stop and think about assurance, it brings confidence. And also in Colossians chapter 2, verse number 2, it says that their heart might be comforted, being knitted together in love, and unto all riches of the fullest assurance of understanding the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Assurance brings us comfort. Uh, we need to have comfort, amen, even in our trial and tribulation, the good days or bad days. Uh, we need to have the comfort of God, amen, and our hearts are comforted. And comfort means to console, to aid, and to help. And we're always uh, needing help, amen. We're all needing God to intervene in our life, and uh, God brings about comfort in our life. So we talk about assurance. Not only does it bring the joy, and it brings confidence, but it brings comfort. But also, it uh, in James 1.8, uh, it talks about that, uh, it brings uh, stability in yours of my life. Let me grab my Bible here. I don't have that one printed out for me right there. But in James chapter 1, in verse number 8, if you grab your Bible there, uh, you'll find that. When it talks about a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, you know, it's talking about asking God for wisdom, and God will give you wisdom and stuff. Uh, but don't be double-minded about it and uh, being unstable. And assurance brings us stability. And stability is resistance to sudden change, reliability, and dependability. Amen. So when you're stable in something, you don't make quick changes because something blew by, uh, some kind of wind of doctrine or something in your faith. Amen. You know what your Bible says. You've been studying your Bible. Uh, you trust God in that. You've got stability in him. 
And so your resistance to the change of the world, the change of wind direction and stuff, uh, even, in, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Just because all the fish are swimming downstream doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, sometimes you got to be the fish that st uh, swims upstream. And uh, just because the majority thinks it's one way and it's actually the other, uh, sometimes you, uh, you have to learn how to walk alone with God, amen, and not follow the majority. The majority is not always right. And so stability, uh, we have resistance to sudden change, reliability, and dependability, and that uh, it brings us uh, not only that, but st steadfastness. Uh, stop and think about it. Not only do we have stability, but it has steadfastness. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, uh, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, uh, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, what we do for God, don't ever stop and think. Whatever you do for the Lord, it wasn't done in vain. Amen. You did it to please God. You did it to help God, help to build a kingdom and stuff. And so uh, I'm going to tell you something. Your labor is not in vain. It's not empty in the Lord. It means something to God because it meant something to you and you did something for him. In Philippians 127, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I uh, come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You see, we are to depend and rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in uh, Psalm 118.8, it said, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And then also in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct the paths. So, you know, we got steadfastness here. We got confidence in God and not in man. My confidence is not in President Trump. I thank God what God has done uh, through President Trump and what President Trump has allowed God to do through him. I praise God for that. But my confidence is in God and that God is using a man to accomplish his will. And we as Christians ought to get behind that and praise God for it. Amen. Uh, I can remember the days when gas prices were three, over $3 a gallon and uh, our jobs weren't coming back and you're going to have to accept 1% uh, uh, GDP growth in your national economy and stuff like that. I mean, those are all stinking lies. Obamacare was a lie. The guy that came out and architect that thing talked about how stupid we were as American people and that it was a lie from the beginning. And uh, they knew that as far as Obama and his administration, but they would handle with it anyway, trying to get it to fail so that we'd go, go to uh, trust in the government to take care of our health care. And we're, we're, as Americans, uh, we are not be trusting our government to take care of anything. You know, it's supposed to be representing us, but we're allowing them to run us instead of us running them. Uh, but anyways, you ever got that changed around, things would change in our country. But uh, assurance brings stability, steadfastness. You got to watch out that you don't get, uh, when you talk about wisdom and stuff, and you start talking, asking God for help, that you don't become uh, a person that has instability, which is the quality or state of being unstable. And unstable means to be unsettled, unsteady, one that lacks resistance, one that is insubordinate, and one that is unruly. Uh, we shouldn't be that way as as people, amen. And so uh, we ought to have stability in Christ. We ought to have stability in our walk, be steadfast in him, and not be a person that has, shows instability or unstable. And also warning against instability, the Bible, instability, the Bible says this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 14, uh, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by everyone to doctrine by the slight of men, the cunning craftiness, or by the lie and wait and deceive. And in James 1, 5-6, it says, If any man lack wisdom, I let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not with, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So something for us to think about here, we don't want to be people that are unstable or that exhibit instability. We want to be steadfast in Christ and stable in our walk with the Lord. And then you got over here in... Uh, First John chapter five verses four through five. It says, "For whatsoever is for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And so assurance uh, uh, enables us to overcome the world. Amen. So we ought to talk about being overcomers. Assurance enables us to uh, eff uh, effectively serve the Lord by telling others about Jesus Christ." And we are overcomers. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And so the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 40 through 41, it says here that one of the two uh, which heard John speak followed him. 
and Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, uh, he first uh, findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, uh, which is being interpreted to Christ. And then uh, chapter 4, verse number 28 to 29 in John, it says, The woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man who told me uh, all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And then also in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely a, a gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And so these folks uh, realized they're, they're walking in the Lord Jesus Christ and getting saved and made them overcomers of the world. And now they're the overcomers, but man, they went out and told others about the Lord Jesus Christ and went and got others because of uh, them overcoming that. And they were able to effectively serve the Lord and they told others about Christ. When's the last time you shared the gospel with somebody else? When's the last time you put a track down someplace that you went or put it in somebody's hand or just encouraged somebody? Uh, so, you know, uh, there's folks out there that are hurting today. Then uh, you have the answer, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the assurance of our salvation that is kept now and forever because God said it's kept by the power of God. He gave us eternal life. Amen. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. We're kept in the hand of Christ, the Bible says, and, and not only that, but we're also in the hand of God. And no man is able to pluck them out of our Father's hand, which is greater than all. And so I thank God for that. So I have the assurance that I am saved, not based on, on me or something I did, but based on what Jesus Christ did for me. So folks, you have yourself a super day today. And uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, today and ask your blessing upon the rest of the day. Thank you for this time to be able to come in and I teach a lesson on the assurance and uh, father that we do have assurance lord and i praise you lord for that and uh, father we thank you lord for what jesus christ did for us help us to serve you today and be found faith in your eyes in jesus name amen